What's up, Junkie Nation? Gorgeous George and Goes reporting for duty here. Anxious to talk to our next guest, who's the co-main eventer at BKFC 56, taking place this week in Utah, Salt Lake City, Utah. It's Todd Duffy. Duffman's back here. He's going to be slinging them against Big Ben Rothwell. A couple of MMA guys splashing over at uh, BKFC. Todd, is that the way you would want it, or would you rather have faced in your debut an actual bare knuckle guy, I guess? I mean, Ben is a bare knuckle guy at this point. He's been doing it for probably over a year. Uh, he, you know, right? I don't know. I feel like he's pretty much bare knuckle. Yeah, I guess guy. you're right. I guess he, he's got a couple fights under his belt. Um, but you know, it just seems like I, I, you got MMA guys showing up and fighting other MMA guys, which there's nothing wrong with that. I and mean, you guys are outstanding athletes. You guys can go do all kinds of stuff. Look at Big Francis and who just went and boxed ten rounds against Tyson Fury, right? Wow, right? He was amazing, no? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that was impressive. What did you guys think going in before, be honest? Oh, I thought yeah, Fury was going to put on a master for performance, maybe win nine rounds the one or something. But Yeah, I, mean, I thought he would gas him out after, like, the third or fourth and just, like, wear on him, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I did not. I'm not sure. I also thought he could get dropped in the first three by Nagano for sure. Yeah. But he definitely came out and impressed. But part of you's not shocked he did, right? Like, part of you's all, everybody's kind of like, oh, it makes sense almost. Mm, <laughs> I was a little shocked. I wasn't shocked that he knocked them down. But yeah. I, I thought I saw him of the two starting to just tire a little. Not, like, physically exhausted, <laughs> you know, or nothing like that. But just you could tell he was waning down. I thought he took not, round nine off. And that might have actually cost him if you look at the scorecards. So I thought yeah. that's about where Tyson Fury pulls away. But look, to be fair, I've seen this happen to Canelo. I've seen it happen to De La Hoya. Like, there's just some fighters in the championship rounds. Sometimes they ain't got what they had in those early ones, you know. But man, For sure, I mean, for sure. And I think, like, mm -hmm. with a brand new sport like that, too, you got to think the conditioning is a little different. Mm -hmm. That was also the really impressive part. And how about if we apply all this to you? Have you been doing a what you feel might be is a BKFC type of fight camp or is it just right. combat sports is combat sports what how, how did you adjust uh i have i mean i had seven weeks right so i got with some boxers and i got with some MMA guys both um i think you have to take into account it's not boxing but i also think you have to take into account it's not wrestling <laughs> so it's did i lose you guys no, no we're here, we're here. Oh, okay um so, yeah, I mean, my camp has been a mix of both. Uh, I got with Josh Copeland. I got with Martin. I got with Bigfoot. So I got with boxers and MMA guys, and then I had a guy that, that does both. So I got a good group of guys. Um, and John Fitch actually came in early the first week, and John Fitch gave me some really great rounds too. Um, John Fitch is 240 now, guys. Really? I, yeah, he outweighed me at one point. I think he's over. I think he was like 250. Yeah. Is he all jacked up or did he gain weight? Wait. No, he's still John Fitch. He's just been lifting mm -hmm. weights and that's all he's been doing. It's easy to gain weight once you kind of get away from MMA, though, I'm sure. Most of these guys are probably 30 pounds of muscle less than they are if they were do not training MMA full time. Is he going to do bare knuckle or was he just there to be a body for you? Uh, I think he's considering it. I was kind of pushing him towards it. I think he'd be very excited in bare knuckle, honestly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you I don't know, think he's going to do it at heavyweight. I don't think that was the idea. Um, I think he would probably get back into fighting shape, probably. Well, there's a guy named Mike Richmond. I don't know if you remember him. I think they call him the Marine. He fought yeah, at 135 at Bellator, and he's he's throwing down like a 195 at bare knuckle. Yeah, it's different rounds. So you're doing five two-minute rounds, so you're going to gain weight, ideally. But I just pre prepped for an MMA fight when, like prior to this, so I was coming in seven, eight weeks basically notice what fight were you prepping for can you tell us uh it was that rising fight and i didn't get my oh. uh, visa okay uh, that was against uh ensign in student right yeah i can't say his name correctly so i'm not gonna i don't want to put you for you guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah he needs to get a sweet nickname <laughs> he should go with honestly he's a sumo guy he should go with the honda from street fighter but be cool yeah <laughs> Um, you know, Josh Copeland, 
Ben Rothwell, we interviewed him last week. He's raved about Josh. He says, that's a tough dude, man. He's going to do well in bare knuckles. So I imagine, do you share the same sentiment? Did you get good rounds from him and good advice from him? I got great work with Josh. Like Josh understands bare knuckle. Josh um, has a style that is particularly good for bare knuckle, um, even his MMA style. Like, And uh, yeah, no, he gave me a lot of great work and he like, gave me a lot of great insight. I'm really grateful for Josh. Like, um, but yeah, if you look at Josh's MMA style, it worked, you know, and he's, he's really transitioned. Well, he likes it too. He's good at it. I think it's kind of his true calling from his style standpoint. When you've talked to bare knuckle fighters and they've told you, you know, what it's like or what to expect, was there anything that jumped out of you? Like, Whoa, really? Uh, one of the really high level MMA guys that I talked to, I want to, I, yeah. Alan Belcher gave me like two or three things that were like, oh, oh, like little check marks. Because I spoke to Alan really close, like right, right after I, like right before I signed or right as I signed the fight. Mm -hmm. um, so he, he gave me the most like, oh, moments. But Mike Perry and Eddie Alvarez both also gave me some oh moments, too. Um, the big thing is you got to think about your wrist. It's just a different wrap. Okay. So That's what I was going to ask you. Yeah. yeah. It's not your knuckles that you're thinking. It's your wrist, I think. It's just different ways to train too, different approaches. Um, right. You know, it's in, in Alan broke it down real well. It is different. He's like that first minute in the everybody. It's a little different because you got to find your distance is a little different too. Um, mm -hmm. It's not boxing. It's not MMA. I don't know. You know, I'm going to go out there and find out. Right. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, the approach has been mixing everything, obviously, because Ben mm -hmm. is good everywhere. You know, he likes to clinch. He likes to box. He likes to everything. Todd, what about the environment? So what I mean is this. When some of the pride fighters came to the UFC, just the fact that they were no longer in a square ring was really weird for them, their movements and stuff. You're in a round ring. Have you thought about that? Has, has that been kind of weird, just having to know how to circle out and what, what your surroundings are? Yeah, I mean, there's no greater um, thing that changes the sport than the actual setting of the sport essentially right so like the, it's a massive difference between the ufc and the horizon simply based off the ring you know when they go to the ring in mma it's a different sport almost um so this is yeah it's it's, it's much different it changes the rules of engagement it changes the distance it changes a lot it's a 20 uh you know i think it's 20 feet across in diameter and uh it's a tight hot box you know it's a very enclosed tight space um it forces the action and it forces the engagement like with a corner you have depth that you can get out of the corner if the guy over commits with this you guys it's, it's a little different with a circle you're kind of boxed in it's interesting you know everybody thinks with uh bare knuckle there is no um feeling out process and for the most part a lot of fights do kind of go head to head really quick but austin trout who's a boxer kind of did show us that you can somewhat have a little bit of a feeling out process and just kind of work your way into certain positions that you want when we when we hear heavyweights and especially when we hear you two we just think oh my god it's gonna be that cartoon fight you know where there's just smoke and and a big blur yeah, of sure. punches but what do you think man two heavyweights like can they go the distance will the will there be a feeling out process is that possible I don't want to give too much away of my game plan. I, I don't, I think it's going to be what you described. You know, it's going to be a very exciting, big, uh, fast, nasty fight. Um, Almost sounds like the Frank Mir fight, not to bring back um, uh, that type of memory, but you guys, man, you threw down in San Diego. I was there and I remember like there was this vacuum of like everyone holding their breath because uh, you guys, you know, Slugged yeah, out we went after, well. didn't we? Uh, I mean, Frank mm -hmm. came out and set a pace. You know, like he came out and immediately looked to exchange, and he got the better of like the first two exchanges. I was pretty much he had me. Yeah, I was never really in that one. I was just in a, you know, I was in a defense. I thought you connected a few times. Yeah, no, I did, but I uh, he had me out probably. Like he flashed me a couple times in those exchanges for mm. sure. Like I woke mm -hmm. up with my back on the cage exchanging with him. I remember that uh he came out and set a pace so i just ended up matching it because i got i was in the fight at that point like he was he got the jump essentially yeah he did a good job um, that. you mentioned that you told john fitch he should do bare knuckle does that come from 
in the short time you've been with Bare Knuckle, they've treated you well? Is it a good payday? What is it about it that you're already kind of, kind of, you know, sharing no, with the teammates I, that hey, this might be a good spot for you? I just think it's a good, it's something he might enjoy. You know, I got it. Uh, okay. and it's a good experience that I think he'd be good at. To be mm -hmm. very honest with you, I just think it fits his style very well. Um, he has that style of striking already from MMA, believe it or not. Um, and he understands that space. That's the space he fought MMA in. Mm -hmm. um, that like that distance. Um, no, I mean, that was really, I just think he's, he makes sense for the sport. Is this for you too good of an opportunity to pass up or do you plan on making bare knuckle an actual career? Like, do, have you signed a contract or is it fight by fight? I think everything in this this sport or this realm is fight by fight. To be honest with you, just in general, mm -hmm. from every contract I've ever seen, it's pretty much even if you know. Um, but for me, it's just like it's an amazing opportunity to fight Ben Rothwell. It's like that's a great, exciting fight for the fans. It's a great, exciting fight for me. Mm -hmm. MMA is still in your future, though. Yeah, of course. I can't. Like I was just preparing for an MMA fight. Yeah, is there? Sure. Uh... With PFL's acquisition of Bellator, is there an opening for you there? I would think probably, yeah. Who knows? Uh, who knows what direction they're going to take things? That's very interesting. Like, what I've understood, and correct me if I'm wrong, I feel like you guys would know better. They're going to keep it separate. Yeah, for the first year, they've committed to eight Bellator events, and they want to uh, fulfill those i guess and so what we think is they probably have either deals with arenas or countries or whatever so they're going to do eight events bellator and and it also allows them to finish out like that lightweight grand prix or whatever but then we also hear you know the i, I don't know if you watched the pfl event the other day they're actually bringing bellator champions inside their smart cage I see, and yeah i saw them clips off. Of that. that's what so a few of them were like, well, hold on a second. What's happening here? You know, like, uh, the, I guess the long answer to your question is it looks like uh, they're going to kind of, according to maybe, like, maybe some champions might do champs versus champs, and then other contenders might do the, the Bellator series. We really don't know. Yeah, I. it sounds to me like they have one roster and two brands now, right? Is that pretty much? Yeah. So they have one roster and two brands that they're going to – or two types of promotions because the rule sets are different too, right? A little bit like no elbows. No elbows during the regular season at PFL, you know, because they obviously have the – you have to do four fights in one year. So I think they want to yeah. prevent, you know, a cut taking you out. Um, but you can use them in the playoffs. You just can't use them in the regular season. And, um, you know, I'm not sure about some of the other ones, what they might be, but – uh, I, I mean, yeah, you, exciting. would you even want to do a season? Would you want to do four fights in one season for a million bucks? Or yeah, is that like a lot? I mean, to run off a tournament. A tournament's the best. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Because you know, like, and, it doesn't matter if you're hurt. None of that stuff. Like, you get that. Even that kind of gets removed from your head a lot easier. I think tournaments mm -hmm. are the coolest thing, for sure. So, PFL is fight month, month, month. That's the most beautiful thing in a guy's career, for sure. Right. And, you know, I don't mean any disrespect with this follow up, but you've also had long periods of time that you have, haven't been healthy. Right. And so I'm wondering, is that too much in one year? That's why I was asking it like that, I guess. No, because I've also had times where I've been healthy, but there's contract issues, all kinds of, you know, life events and things like that that keep you out of, uh, you know, it's not easy getting mashed up as a heavyweight uh, for come to find. Mm -hmm. It's incredibly hard. All right. Well, we certainly always wish the best for you. I think this is an outstanding fight. That's why it's a co-main event in your debut. You're both yeah. well-known, and you both know how to sling them, that's for sure. But obviously, man, we're MMA junkie. We'd love to see you back in MMA and cover you there as well. And if that's an opening for you, I think that'd be awesome because I've seen a lot of um, athletes transition and almost reinvent themselves. That guy, Shoeface, he came over from the UFC where he did very well for himself, but he he's not over even that guy. He's one of the best jiu-jitsu players in the sport, bro. He's amazing. Oh, yeah. He's Dean a Kasanganai, He just did the same thing. Remember, he got highlighted by Joaquin Buckley a few yeah. years ago, and he just won a title. You know, he, went, he just won a million he's bucks. A Olivier Aubin Marseille as well. He's gone back to back. It's pretty impressive. The guy, that the other guy you mentioned, I can't I can't pronounce his name correctly. Go ahead, do it one more time. Impa Kasanganai. Impa Kasanganai. What an amazing yeah. name. That's awesome. He's a beast. I think he could fight Francis. 
He's physically uh, a lot larger. I you saw think him in San so? Antonio. He's a big guy, bro. Maybe. I mean, a tough time. I, I, I think Demetrius, if he had to defend his wife, would fight Francis Ngannou, right? Because <laughs> you guys are all fighters. I get it. I get that part. But I also feel like this is a sport with weight classes, and I don't think it's a smart move. But could he do it? Of course he could do it. I don't think anybody fears anybody. But, man, I, I don't know. That's that's quite the step up there. To it, Maybe he was doing it because he wants the $2 million payday that comes with it, I guess. I don't know. But Absolutely. to me, it kind of went in one ear and out the other. I was like, oh, I don't know about that, man. Well, no, I actually uh, – I was going to say, dude, you beat a guy like Ben Rothwell, and probably the way you're going to do it is pretty – we're going to be pretty nasty. I would throw my name in that hat, right? Because that's what they're looking for is they're saying, we just don't have very sexy matchups at heavyweight. You do something like that to Ben Rothwell, I'd imagine you could come across their table and say, I'd like a shot at uh, Francis Ngannou. Would, would you do something like that? Oh, yeah, I'd love to. I think David would give me that opportunity too, for sure. Yeah, I would love to do that. Um, it's a fun, exciting fight. I think they do have a lot of sexy matchups, though, in my opinion, but... I love heavyweight fights, so maybe I see it differently. But both guys that just fought last weekend would be amazing matchups for him. You know, um, mm -hmm. I think like in general, PFL has a good roster of heavyweights that I'd love to see Francis fight. <laughs> um, but no, please sign me up for that fight. Everybody wants that fight. You got 185ers calling out Francis right now. <laughs> you know, it's like um, yeah. Somehow this boxing thing, in a way, was good. And in a way, it was bad. Why it was good? <clears throat> because it, we represented well for mixed martial arts. I thought that was awesome. But now they're teasing this Deontay Wilder versus Ngannou fight. I mean, come on. In MMA, bro, there's a chance Ghost could beat Deontay Wilder in MMA. You know, like a takedown. <laughs> no, I, I agree. It's kind of rough to watch, but it's exciting. Um, and I wonder if Francis is going to go back to – like, I'd love to see Francis and Bare Knuckle. I think that'd be really badass. Oh, Hell I'd like yeah. to be Ben and then fight Francis and Bare Knuckle. That'd be really, really cool. Uh, but I think he's going to stay in boxing, right? Like, isn't that what this really caused? I, it sounds like he's going to fight MMA versus Deontay Wilder and then probably rematch Fury. But Fury's got to get past usage, which I think he will. Um, but usage is a heavy hitter. Mm -hmm. So who knows? But the thing is, Francis, in January, will be two years having not fought MMA. And I just feel like... I'd love to see him back in MMA at some point. And, and I, cause see, I think Francis is the baddest man on the planet in all combat sports. That goes for Fury, that goes against the Olympic gold medal wrestler, fucking WWE guys, whatever, you know? I just think he earned that by being UFC heavyweight champ and he, and no one ever beat him. But at the same point, at the same time, if you're away too long, it, that gets bestowed on someone else. So I'd love to see him come back and just either, you know, I don't know. What do you think? I just don't know if he's gonna. That's what I'm saying. Like, I think he's gonna stay in boxing. I don't believe Wilder and him are really gonna have an MMA fight. That sounds like just marketing, right? Well, it's mixed rules. I'd love to see him in bare knuckle. That'd be really cool. That's mixed mm -hmm. rules. Sure. <laughs> That'd be really, yeah. really cool. Well, for, uh, you don't have to uh, tell, them, tell us what they're paying you, but does it sound like they sling around big enough money? I mean, Austin Trout's been there. Pauli malinaji has been there. Um, sounds like Dave Feldman opens up the checkbook from time to time, but what, what do you think? Could they afford him? Could they afford Francis? I have no idea what their budget is, but and I don't know what Francis is getting. That's the thing I keep thinking about boxing. He's getting 20 or 30 million is what I'm hearing. So it's like, what's he getting in MP? You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. That's that's the thing. I'm worried that he's going to stay in Saudi Arabia fighting for 20 or 30 million in boxing. Yeah. And I just I don't see why really. Wilder would actually leave boxing, you know? Yeah. Like, what, what does he have to gain? You know, I just think it's marketing. I really think – I think he'll stay over there and he'll get those bigger, easier paydays for for now. I think MMA is tougher for him, for anybody. I mean, I'd love to yeah. see him in MMA. I'd love to see him in yeah, MMA. Yeah, BKFC so nerves at all? Or are you pretty – are you a vet that can basically throw down in any type of sport at this point? I mean, it's a brand-new sport. Uh I have nerves for every fight, you know, it's like, it's a wild experience, you know, um, you're going in there for war. So it's, uh, yeah. I mean, but at the end of the day, it's, it is a fight. It's just yeah. a fight with a certain rule set. Let me ask you a corny question. Every time you pretty much enter a room, whether it's a supermarket, a gym, 
a shopping mall, you're pretty much the baddest man in that building, unless I guess another MMA heavyweight is in there. What's that feel like? I mean, are you do you almost feel like a superhero, I guess? Not you know, or just <laughs> I don't think it registers like you gotta think I grew up in like a super, super, super small town and like a small community, and I was large my whole life. So like none of that really registers, to be honest. Uh-huh. Uh, really? Like yeah, you, you didn't feel like today when you traveled, you were the toughest man on the plane, and if a problem came out, well, you knew you could solve it at least, right? I mean, I'm always willing to offer my services uh, <laughs> to the community um, and be a helpful man. <laughs> but I, honestly, none of that stuff registered, and I think it's because I was a big kid in a mm-hmm. small town, and people already like I already had those. I don't. It doesn't cross my mind ever. I'll be very honest with you, bro. <laughs> Never. When's the last time someone tried to try tried it with you, whether it was at a bar, or they're drunk, or or a club, or or I no one ever I try to talk you. my way out of it pretty quick, typically, and create space. Um, but I mean, in college, when I had a shaved head, like I got a lot of like you know guys in bars trying to fight me, um, and even probably up until I was probably thirty. But since I've grown my hair out, it's a nice little incognito. People are way nicer. Uh, not a lot of bullies out there trying to pick fights with me, you know. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, definitely when I was younger, you look like a math tutor right now. I don't understand why you look more intimidating now. I think with the beard, I think the beard looks hilarious, bro. I look like a chia pet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, dude, I look like I slept in my car. You know, mm-hmm. no doubt about it. Uh, All right. I don't think it makes me look. You think it makes me look? I think people are a lot like. I don't know. I feel like I'd be more, more scared to run people. into you now than your college version of the shaved really? head. I mean, I think so. Mm-hmm. What, what, what do you think goes? I think so. I I have a I have a corny question too. Since George got one, um, I've been to Japan and I'm a little bigger in Japan, and I have that strut that George is talking about, where I feel like I might be the biggest guy in the room. What happens when you go to Japan? Because I remember my room, I could almost hit my head like going into the restroom on the on the thing. Well, what happens when yeah, you're there? Yeah, no, I mean, it's an experience, right? Like, you complain a lot about space. You realize how huge America is really what happens, I think. Um, but, yeah, no, it's a it's a great experience. Uh, it's really nice to see how they use economy in space. Like, you start to appreciate it, but it is a wild, like, probably the first two days, you're like, wow, everything's really small. And you spend about, three, you know. <laughs> but they, uh, <laughs> they, they, uh, they have a special way of saving space. I love it. Yeah, their beds weren't exactly uh, California Kings either. I remember I had tight quarters. No, you're like, yeah, I sleep on the corner of my bed, like in a big bed. You know, I still sleep on the corner, but it's like you are you could fall off both your bed at any moment. <laughs> it's like a hideaway bed almost. I was hardly in the bed. I was on, I was on that bidet all the day. Oh, yeah, thing was awesome. That was my first experience. When I first, first, yeah, that was my first experience with a bidet was in Japan. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I really appreciate y'all. Uh, thank you so much, Japan, for that. Um, but guys, it's super late where I'm at, and I need to get yeah. to bed. I haven't even, like I said, I okay. just got to the hotel room. Um, yeah, you got it. You got it. I had to catch up with you guys. I haven't seen you in a long time. I was Great to catch to up with you too. Sorry for the silly questions, but thanks for giving us the interview on Fight Week. No, bro. I mean, if you want to, it's just the time. It's almost eleven. No, I get it. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> serious. Uh, it, you are an hour ahead, and you do have a fight on this on this week. So uh, trust us. We're we're uh, we totally get it. But thank you, Todd. Honestly, seriously, we're going to be watching. Hope you guys have a great fight. And thanks, for, as always, for the time. Thank you, guys. Miss you all. See you, bud.